In part one of our LumaFusion tutorial series, we discuss projects, which is the basic building block for editing videos in LumaFusion for iOS. Now, before we get started, a lot of people ask me why I use LumaFusion, which costs 20 bucks when I could just use iMovie, which is free. Great question. Truth is, not everyone's going to need LumaFusion, but if you want to know why this app is so powerful and why video editors may choose to use this over something like iMovie, watch our initial walkthrough, which explains. If you're a first time LumaFusion user, it's important to know how to find help and support. And you can do so by tapping the little help button in the upper right hand corner of the interface. And the help button is the question mark inside of the little gear icon. You just tap that, which opens up help and settings, tap help, and then you'll see various help options like support forums, tutorial video, send email to LumaTouch. So if I tap support forum, that will open up the LumaTouch forum where you can converse with other LumaFusion users and get help you need. And of course there are tutorial videos. So not only do you have this video that you're watching right now, but LumaTouch has created a whole lot of different videos to help you get started in LumaFusion. And lastly, you can correspond with the developers via email by tapping the send email to LumaTouch option. You can also toggle touch indicators on the screen. So if you like to see exactly where you're touching, you can do so by going back into the help section and selecting show touches to toggle that feature on. So now, whenever you touch the screen, you can see where you're touching. It even responds to multi-touch gestures like that. And if you later decide that you want to toggle this feature off, just go back to settings and then select hide touches. Now let's get into the fun stuff, creating a new project. Now, if you haven't yet created a project, you will see an interface that looks like this. To create a new project, just tap the new project button in the bottom left hand corner like this. And now you'll be prompted to submit several pieces of information, starting with the project name. So we can go in here and rename this project and we'll just call it Luma Fusion Guide. The next thing we need to customize is the frame rate. So I shot this video at 24 frames per second. Of course, I can choose all sorts of different frame rates in here, but my camera uses 24 frames per second most of the time. And then you can also choose your aspect ratio, in this case, 16 by nine. Okay, so all of our settings are set. Now we can just tap the little plus button next to create project to create the project. Now, once you're in a project, how do you get back to the project viewer? Well, simply tap the project viewer button at the top of the interface, and there you go. So you can use the project viewer interface to create a new project or enter an already existing project. Now, assuming you have media in a project, you can actually use the project viewer to preview that project simply by scrubbing on the project preview right inside the project viewer. You can see the little playhead there as I scrub. Now, of course, you can also use the transport controls right there at the bottom of the source viewer to play back and pause your project preview. LumaFusion allows you to easily rename projects. There are actually two quick and easy ways to do so. You can tap right above the source viewer, right on the name of the project, and rename it that way. Or you can tap on the name of the project in the project viewer, like this, to rename it as well. Now, what if you want to change the settings of a current project? Well, to do so, select the project, of course, then tap the Help and Settings button, and then tap Project Settings. And from here, you can easily adjust the frame rate, so I'm going to change it to 30 instead of 24. You can also adjust the frame aspect ratio. Now, global settings are useful because this influences every new project you create. So to adjust the global settings, go back to Help and Settings, and then tap the Global Settings button. Again, this allows you to influence all the new projects that you create. In other words, you set default settings for each new project. So if I want to set the default frame rate to 24 frames per second, because I usually shoot in 24 frames per second, I can do that. I can also set the default aspect ratio and other settings. We'll get into those other settings in future videos. But for now, we'll just focus on frame rate and aspect ratio. So now when I go in and create a new project, you're going to see the frame rate defaults to 24 frames per second, just like we had it set. But what if I go back in to global settings and change that frame rate to 30? Guess what happens when we create a new project? It's going to default to 30 frames per second, just like that. LumaFusion lets you easily duplicate a project right from the project viewer. So select the project that you wish to duplicate. The selection is defined by that blue outline and then just tap the duplicate button like that 
And now I have a duplicate project. You can see that it appends a number after the project name. So in this case, LumaFusion Guide 1. Now you can also easily delete a project, of course. So to do so, you wanna select the project you wish to delete. Again, the selection is defined by that blue outline around the project. Also, you can see right above the source viewer the name of the project you have selected. So if I choose this one, you can see how the source viewer name changes and the blue outline is there. So tap the delete button and then tap yes to confirm the deletion. From time to time, you may wanna add notes to a project and thankfully that's easy to do right in LumaFusion. You can just tap the little notes button like that and then type in your note. So testing out my Panasonic GH5 and then you can see the notes contents and you can see the little blue icon indicating that there is a note. Similarly, you can also add project color tags. So just tap the little circle button next to the project name and then select from one of the six available colors. So I'll choose purple here and that applies the color tag. So let's do it again. Let's add purple to the LumaFusion guide and we'll add a red tag to the keyboard project. Sorting projects is extremely powerful in LumaFusion. Let me show you how it works. So all you do is tap the sort button in the bottom right hand corner to invoke the sort panel. So all these different items you can sort on, including color, title, notes, creation date, and you can see the ascending and descending button that you can tap to change the direction that your results are displayed. So I can sort on creation date and various other things. Very handy if you have a lot of projects going on at the same time. Thankfully, you can also search your project library by tapping the search button. The cool thing about this is that you can search on a variety of different metadata. So I can search by project name, in this case, iPad Pro. I can also search on notes. So Panasonic was within my note. I can also search on color tags. So red pulls up the red color tag. And if I search for purple, that will pull up the purple color tag and all of the projects associated with that tag. But it doesn't stop there. You can also sort on your filtered results for even more precision. Now we'll get more in depth with exporting projects in the future, but for now, I just wanted to give you a very high level overview. If you tap the export button, you see movie, audio only, project archive, and snapshot. So let's select movie here. So you can see there's various destinations you can choose from, photo app, Dropbox, YouTube, Vimeo, other app or AirDrop, the list goes on and on. I'm gonna choose in this instance, photo app because I don't have to worry about logging in or anything like that to any sharing services. But as you can see, there are tons of different settings that you can establish. And we'll talk about all this later on. For now, I just wanted to give you a glimpse as to what it looks like when you export a movie. Let's cancel this. All right, let's talk about one of the other options here, audio only. And obviously the destination settings will change. We're gonna choose other app slash airdrop. You can see audio quality so you can change the sample rate. You can also change the file format so we can choose M4A or WAVE. Let's go back and let's choose Project Archive this time. Now this is what you wanna use if you want to transport a project and work on it on another device. So if I wanted to move this to my iPhone, I could do so. You could see the destination options. In this case, I'm gonna choose Other App and you can see the share settings. Now, it gives you three options. You can include full media, which gives you the entirety of the media files included in your project. If you wanna save on space, you can choose trimmed media, which will only include the trimmed portion of the media that's included in your project. Or you can choose no media if you just wanna send over the database file and provide the files yourself on the destination device. In this case, I'm gonna choose trimmed and export. All right, so it's writing the movie files. Uploading now, I can choose my destination. I'm gonna choose the files app. Saved it to the LumaFusion folder. All right, so upload is complete. Simple. Now the last option is snapshot, and this basically will just take a screenshot of the current frame that the playhead is positioned on, and that will save it to your photo library. So here's the photos app, here's that saved frame. So that's a quick and easy way to export a frame from your video. I use this all the time. Now you can also import a project, of course, by tapping the import button in the bottom left hand corner on the project viewer. It's limited right now at least to just these four sources. So what I'm gonna do is open up the files app, tap on the uh, export that I did earlier, and then copy to LumaFusion. And you can see it copies it right in. 
Boca 1. Now here's another project that I did a while back, copy it to LumaFusion. You can see I'm missing some media, I'm actually missing a music file there, but all the rest of the media is there and ready to go. So this is a great way to quickly transport projects to different devices or backup projects, whatever the case may be. If you're a new LumaFusion user, you wanna definitely get familiar with the layout of the app. So in the upper left-hand corner, you have your browser and you can select all your different sources. This is where you get your media. In the upper right-hand corner lies your source viewer. Now this can be used to preview media in your browser. It could also be used to playback media in a project via the project timeline, which is right here. Now the timeline is where you go in and arrange all the different media that you take from your browser into a cohesive final project. One of the powerful things about LumaFusion is that you can adjust the layout to your liking. If you tap the layout button in the upper right hand corner, you'll see six different layouts to choose from. This is something that full-fledged video editing apps are known for on the desktop. Now it's pretty impressive that this is in an iOS app, but you can see there you can swap the browser and the source viewer if you wanna do that. And of course you can swap them back, but it doesn't stop there. You can also fully extend the browser like this. And that of course comes at the expense of your horizontal real estate for your timeline. You can also swap that, but this is great if you wanna view more media in your browser. Now you can also hide the browser if you just wanna view the source viewer in the timeline, which is great for when you've got all the media that you need and you just wanna focus on editing. And then lastly, you can hide the timeline, which is great for just previewing source media that you're thinking about using. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this basic introductory tutorial to LumaFusion and you wanna see more videos like this, then please leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.